Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be talking about linear regression. So linear regression is an extension of correlation which we've already looked at and what it does is it gives us a way of trying to actually measure uh, a relationship between the two variables beyond just talking about the strength. So the correlation told me about the strength of a linear relationship, so how close to a straight line is the relationship between these two metric variables and what the regression does is it actually will give me an equation which I can use to be able to characterize this relationship and even use uh, to be able to predict uh, the outcome of one variable based on the other. So one big difference between linear regression and correlation is that with linear regression we are associating uh, some sort of causation. Or at the very least we are saying here is an independent variable and a dependent variable. So one variable, the dependent variable, is being predicted by the independent variable. So we'll have a look at an example. So let's suppose that we have some data on houses that sold recently and we've been collecting information on their sale price and the size of the house. And we find that there is a quite strong correlation. The correlation is 0.76, so it's pretty strong. And the p-value is 0.01, so not only is it a strong correlation, we definitely think that it translates from the sample into the population. But what I want to know is, yeah, I've got the strong relationship, but can I actually turn this into a relationship that I can measure? And I can. So I've got some data points there. And basically what regression does is it fits a straight line. So uh, some of you may have heard of the, time, the term line of best fit. What it's done is it's put the line which best characterizes the relationship between all of these points. And so our software has done that for us. And here highlighted in green, we can see we now actually have an equation. So this relationship has now been turned into an equation. And so if we want to estimate a house price in thousands of dollars, uh, we have this figure 98, so this is a constant, 98, and then we've got uh, the slope of the line, which is going to be our multiplier, and it gets multiplied by how many square feet we have. So as square feet increases, each additional square foot is going to add this much on to my predicted house price. So if I wanted to predict another house price, maybe I have one that's just over 2,000 square feet, then I, my prediction would be here. So I could trace across, uh, or more accurately, I could use my equation and I can get an estimate for my house price. So if we have a look at a couple of examples, so here's my equation, I've just carried it over. Uh, so if I wanted to predict the cost of a thousand square foot house, I can just plug a thousand into my equation. And so we get 98.248.10977 times a thousand. We get 208.018. And we need to remember that that was in thousands of dollars. So my predicted house price is $208,018. Sometimes instead of doing the actual prediction, we might just want to interpret the slope. Uh, so the slope is telling me for each additional square foot how much uh, higher I think the house price is going to be. And so that can multiply out as well. So if I have 400 additional square feet, then it'll be 400 times that will tell me how much additional uh, money will be on the house price. So we go 400 times the 0.10977 or if we already multiply that out because it's in thousands of dollars, uh, $109.77, and we end up with 43908 So if we have two houses and one house has 400 more square feet than the other, then we would expect uh, on average, based on our data, that the bigger house uh, would have a house price that is 43908 higher. 
Okay, so that was a fairly simple example where we just had one dependent variable being predicted by one independent variable. More commonly what will happen is we have multiple regression. So with multiple regression, uh, instead of just one predicting variable, like size of house, we might have lots. So we might have size of house and number of bedrooms and a whole lot of other different variables. And the process for doing any predictions is exactly the same. Uh, I've written it algebraically here, but you can imagine these just all substitute for numbers. So we have a slope, and we have a uh, so we have a constant. We have a slope for variable one, slope for variable two, so on and so on. And we just plug in our values for each. So these can be handy for being able to do predictions. Uh, and also for getting a handle on exactly what kind of relationships we have amongst our data. So I've got an example here, and it's the table's a little bit hard to follow, uh, but I'll try and talk through it a little bit. So this is out of a journal article uh, where they did some surveying and they did some data collection. And so here is the title down here. So they were looking at associations between early childhood television and academic, psychosocial, and physical well-being by middle childhood. Uh, and here is the journal reference, uh, if you did want to go and try and find this journal. Um, so the Archive of Pediatric Adolescent Medicine, that's the shorthand, uh, shorthand name for it there. Uh, 164 number 5, it was in May 2010. So they went and they collected a whole lot of information uh, about these kids and then tracked them down later when they were in preschool, then tracked them down later and got the teacher to report on various different outcomes. So what we're actually looking at is three different multiple regressions here. So each column is a separate uh, multiple regression. So in each case, this one, this one, this one, these are our dependent variables. So we wanted to see how all of these things affected classroom engagement. Then separate one, how all of these things affected victimization. Then how all of these things affected mathematical success. The little subscript B's and C's, uh, they relate to p-values. So they're using those to indicate where we've got uh, B for a very small p-value or C for a quite small p-value. So if we have a look at mathematics success, for instance, uh, we're interested in the, the, the B or the beta Greek letter beta here, that is the slope. Uh, we won't worry about what's in the brackets, but the slope is the important one. So my slope was for the relationship uh, for mathematics success in the early television viewing uh, was negative 0 0.06. So that's saying uh, as early tele viewing increased, so kids are watching more TV uh, as, a, as a youngster, uh, then the mathematical success was actually decreasing and we can see it's got a subscript for a small p-value. Uh, we've got a few that weren't significant, so for instance sex has a negative negative uh, slope, there's actually categorical, so this negative just tells me about the difference between males and females, but no subscript, so it wasn't actually a significant difference. Uh, but if we come down the bottom here, some of these other significant ones, uh, maternal education, family makeup. Uh, so this particular study they found that those were two other predictors of mathematical uh, mathematical success. Uh, there's certainly a lot that can be critiqued uh, about this particular study um, and in particular even though we do have these variables that seem to be linked to these variables, uh, overall the uh, what we call the, the adjusted R squared, which gives us a measure of the total predictive power of the model, which is this very bottom line, uh, was very low. So these figures here, this is saying that in fact all of these variables only account for 5% of the variation in mathematics success. So 95% of the variation for uh, where we're trying to predict this isn't being covered by all these variables. So there's lots, there's lots of information, or lots, lots of potential variables that are missing there. So that's one quite big criticism, but I thought it was quite interesting just to show you an example where there had been some surveying, 
and then the surveying had they had then used regression to try and look at uh, relationships between lots of variables and some outcomes. This has been a Swinburne production.